In this chapter, we are going to talk about feature interactions and the difference to feature dependencies. Because these two concepts, interactions and dependencies, usually are mixed up, we are trying to clarify these two terms. As we have already learned, feature dependencies concern mainly the data or the joint distribution between multiple random var variables. In contrast, the feature interactions can occur in the model, they are basically a property of a model or a property of data generating process. For example, if we have a model f hat which predicts a target based on features x, it can contain interactions between multiple features. A data generating process, which is usually a true underlying not known relationship between the features x and the target y. Here also an interaction between multiple features can be present. So feature dependencies usually can also lead to feature interactions in a model because if features are dependent in the data, a machine learning model tends to estimate also interactions. Uh, one thing to note is that feature interactions usually increase exponentially if we have more features because we not only have two-way interactions but can have interactions between multiple features, three, four, five or more. And here it's difficult to identify which interactions are important, especially if we have complicated data with a lot of dependencies. Let's make an example. Usually feature interactions are present if the effect of a feature on the prediction depends also on other features. For example, here the effect of x1 depends on the effect of x2. And we can look below at two decision trees on the left hand side of the decision tree without interactions, meaning that here, since the decision tree splits with respect to x1, on the left hand side we only have a function that depends on feature x1. Also on the right hand side we have only a function that depends only on x1. In contrast we can see here that we have two different features so that the terminal node here depends on two features. So it's so to say a function depending on x1 and x2. And here we have interactions present between x1 and x3. And because we are splitting first on x1 and then on x3 on the left hand side. And also between x1 and x2. Also we can see that there are no interactions between x2 and x3. Because the decision tree here does not depend on these two features. Let's look at a mathematical definition of feature interactions that was already introduced in 2008 in this paper here. So essentially, if a function contains interactions between two features, say xj and xk, the difference in the function values due to changes of one of these two features will also depend on the other feature. This means that if we take the derivative with respect to one feature and then take the derivative with respect to the second feature and we square this resulting expectation here, if the value is greater than zero, it means that our function contains interactions. If we would have value of zero here, this would mean that there's no interaction and in case of no interaction, so if xj and xk do not interact with each other, we can write the function as the sum of two functions removing feature j from the one hand side and removing the second feature k from the other hand side. Let's look at an example to make this more clear. Here we have a non-separable function to illustrate that this example function here contains interactions. So first of all, we we'll just simply apply the definition that we have looked at previously, meaning that we just take the derivative of this function with respect to x1, 
which basically then ends up in this value here, 1 plus x2, and then take again the derivative with respect to x2. Of course, we can already see that we get here a value that is larger than 0, because if you take the derivative with respect to x2, the result is 1, and also 1 to the square is 1, and we end up in a value larger than 0. This means that we can assume that there is an interaction between x1 and x2. So on the left-hand side, we see how this function in a two-dimensional space spanned by x1 and x2 will look like. In the beginning, we said that we have an interaction if changes of feature values will depend on another feature. And here we will illustrate what this means. First of all, let's look at three different values for x2, which are slices in this direction here. And we will see what happens with x1, the effect of x1, if we look at these three different values of x2. As we can see, the lines here have usually a different slope which means that the effect of x1 will depend on the value of x2, saying that we have interactions present here. The other way around is basically the same. If we have slices and look at three different values of x1, yeah, like these three values here, we end up in three different slopes. So the effect of x1 on the function varies with different values of x2 and vice versa. Let's look at another example where we have a separable function. We're looking at this function here. Instead of just using the product of x1 and x2, we're just log transforming this product of x1 and x2. So I can already say in beforehand, this is a function that does not have any interaction according to the definition we have looked at. And the reason is the following. Using the rules of the log logarithm, we can write down this product as a sum of the logarithm of x1 and the logarithm of x2. Doing so, we are able to separate the function into one part that only depends on x1 and another part that only depends on x2. This means that we don't have interactions in this function here. Also, if we apply the previous definition, we can basically see that we end up in having a value that is exactly zero and speaks for having no interactions. Again, we here visualize the function in the space of x1 and x2 and look if different values of x2 like these three values again, that are coming from these slices here. If we get a different slope or a different shape of the curves, basically these curves that we see here, they are only vertically shifted. So there's no difference in the shape. They are only shifted. And this means that the slope at each position of value x1 will be the same for all of these three different values. And basically, that's the contrary as we have seen before. The parallel lines suggest that we don't have any interaction because changing values of x1 here will not change the slope or the effect of the other feature and the other way around.